I work in the regional office of a global union federation called Public Services International, PSI. PSI uh, is a global union federation with more than 700 affiliates around the world, representing uh, around 30 million workers. We have a regional office here in Sao Paulo, where I live in Brazil, and my region is Inter-Americas. So from the top of Canada down to the, the bottom of Argentina. I do some global work as well, but principally I work on files for uh, Inter-Americas. And uh, we have very little staff, like all of the Global Union Federations. And so what that means for me, for work every day, is that I do a little bit of everything. This is a constant challenge and it's constantly interesting uh, and I'm constantly learning. Um, there's days when you'll go from uh, a meeting with representatives of the International Monetary Fund to a meeting with a, a union that has 50 members uh, in, in Central America in, in the health sector. And so it really is extremely diverse in terms of the, the tools that you need, uh, in terms of the, the skills required, and in terms of the, um, the continuity after those meetings that you, that you give to, to the work. The participation in the, in the Global Labour University profoundly changed my life. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I, I was an auto worker uh, that didn't finish high school. I was working on the assembly line in, in an automotive factory in Canada. My job was to put windows into cars 520 times per day. And so I was a, a, a local leader in my factory in, in Canada in, in, the, in the Ford Motor Company. Uh, and came in contact with the glue because of some contacts at a local university in Canada. We were looking at how I specifically was looking at how workers were putting, being put directly into competition with each other in the, the NAFTA region, the North American uh, Free Trade Agreement, as it was called uh, previously. And so the Ford Motor Company came to us and they said, we have this new product and we want to invest in the next generation of technology in your factory. But there's a group of workers in Mexico who are interested in that investment as well. But nobody was talking directly to those workers in Mexico. <laughs> and so I talked to some of the guys from, uh, who had moved to Canada from Chile. And I knew some of those guys that worked in the factory with me. I said, hey, you guys still speak Spanish every day, right? Like you guys could talk to the Mexicans, right? They said, yeah, of course we could, no problem. And so we used the phones on the floor of the factory to call the workers in Mexico. <laughs> and the workers in Mexico said, no, it's actually a lie. We have new investment and we have no space to expand. And so what the company is saying to you is actually not true. And so that really forced me to, to rethink how international relations works, how global solidarity works. And so at the end of that experience directly as a metal worker, I, I heard about this program, this Global Labor University program, and I said, wow, this sounds like giving some kind of continuity uh, to, to the work that I've already been doing. It sounds really interesting. And so I applied and got accepted to participate in the first year uh, of the, the Global Labor University. Um, and it was a, a, it was a profound, life-changing experience. I, I went from Canada, your, your world seems big, uh, but you discover that your world actually is very small. Uh, and my group uh, at the Global Labor University was 23 students from 18 different countries. Fantastically diverse with different visions and histories and politics and uh, different versions of capitalism and different class compromise and reflections of class compromise in, in your own countries and trade unionists and workers coming from all different sectors uh, in my group. And from there, I mean, the idea that I understood from the beginning at the, when I entered into the GLUE was that this is not like any other typical kind of master's program where the idea is to graduate, people become professionals in a specific area and then go on to their careers. The ideas from the beginning, as I understood it, was to build trust networks in the labor movement, durable trust networks where we could do joint international research, having this interchange between academic world and the trade union world where we could build other consensus where we could build counter consensus, we could build our own consensus about uh, the kind of world that we wanted to live in. Definitely, I mean, I uh, maintain a strong and principled commitment to uh, participating in anything that I get invited to from uh, comrades that are involved with the Global Labour University. I'm here in the regional office of the, of the Global Federation PSI, the Global Union Federation, and PSI has been supportive 
of the, the Global Labor University since its inception, since it was launched. And there is a, a GLU campus in a city called Campinas, which is uh, about an hour and a half drive from where I live here in Sao Paulo at a, a, a fantastic university with a beautiful campus there. And for some years now, I've been doing uh, some teaching, facilitating with the, the local uh, campus. And so whenever I get invited, which is a couple of times a year, usually uh, by the local professors, I'll go and, and talk about trade unions in North America and the changes over time with uh, models of trade unionism in North America, talk about the Global Union Federations. Uh, so whenever I get invited, of course, I, I participate actively. One of the, the really memorable experiences for me uh, was with a, before having lived in Brazil, one of the really memorable experiences for me was with a, a Brazilian comrade. We were back uh, in Germany for a conference a few years after I had graduated. And there was a, a demonstration against, uh, against banks and it was happening in Berlin. And there, were, there, were, there was a big intersection of streets uh, with four or five lanes going in all directions and a, and a metro line going across the top of all these, uh, of, the, of all the cars and banks on the different corners. And so there was this demonstration against the banks that were, they were all kind of being targeted, even though some are more favorable targets, of course, the, than others, right? Um, but we heard uh, the, the, the conference uh, participants, the seminar participants from the Blue Network had heard that this demonstration was going on. We always try to, um, build links with local movements and local trade unions wherever we live and wherever we wherever we visit. And so we talked to the organizers of this event. We decided that we would go participate. So we went as a big block of uh, glue participants to this demonstration to participate and well organized uh, uh, by the Germans, as you can imagine, but like running across this intersection in between the cars and the police chasing and then running to the other intersection. And we got a little bit trapped at one point in the, during this demonstration. Uh, uh, in front of one bank and the bank, of course, locked the door so we couldn't get in and the police were coming to, to, to repress, right? The police were coming to do what the police do in, in every country, right? Uh, with, with the varying levels of violence, of course. And so the German police were coming on top of us and the, uh, a Brazilian comrade uh, who lives in, in Rio here, she was from the, the bank workers union, Joe Portillo. Joe uh, was a really fantastic local leader in the, in the Bank Workers Union. And Joe, out of nowhere, nobody expected this, is kind of stuck against the door, right? And everybody was like, okay, there's no escape. The police have us surrounded. They just locked the door. We can't get into the bank to escape from the police. So she pulls out her room key from the hotel where we're staying and she holds it up and she says, I have the key to the bank. <laughs> and everybody starts cheering and thinking that maybe it's real. And this changes the energy completely and allowed us the opportunity to, to break out of where the, the police had been, been holding us. So it's a really fantastic kind of memory of how, uh, how these comrade networks work uh, when you're in the streets and you get outside of the academic and the formal conferences, like how we, uh, how we have the opportunity to, to build solidarity in a, in, a, in a very concrete way. I mean, I'm hopeful uh, about the future of the, the global university, global labor university. Uh, the direction that I think things should go is to um, continue to deepen the organic connections between uh, the trade union and academic and activist worlds. Uh, this, this idea of creating other kinds of consensus and other kinds of political alternatives. Uh, I think the glue has a fundamental role in that. And so when we have that kind of understanding going into a program, it's really important to consolidate it when people come out of that program. I think the conferences have been really key to that consolidation, uh, to, to give life to the, the network once people do graduate. There's been really good coordination on that, but I think that can always be strengthened and deepened. I think we can look to places where uh, there already are um, existing uh, contacts and networks being built and try to strengthen those and link them with others uh, in a broader way throughout the GLUE network. This requires resources. Uh, <laughs> there's no shortcuts. There's no way of getting around the fact that um, we, need to, we need to have resources in order to, to organize ourselves. It's not going to happen spontaneously. It, it happens with hard work. And so we need, uh, we need trade unions, we need academic, we need resources from foundations, wherever we can get them uh, in order to, to build and sustain the, 
the network into the future. So the, the future is, uh, is to continue to um, water and make sure that the, the plants, the seeds that have grown from uh, the 20 years uh, of glue have a chance really to, to come to flower and to produce other seeds and to con continue to grow and, and strengthen.